Hello, my name is Jonathan Gibson, and this is a Certified Ethical Hacker course. You'll be learning definitions of an ethical hacker, terms you should know, what CIA means, and legal considerations. Now, what exactly is an ethical hacker? We normally consider all hackers to be bad guys, but it's a common misconception. In reality, we categorize hackers in three categories, white hat, gray hat, and black hat. An ethical hacker is a computer and networking expert who systematically attempts to penetrate a computer system or a network on behalf of its owners for the purpose of finding security vulnerabilities that a malicious hacker could potentially exploit. They're often referred to as white hat hackers. They follow an EC council code of conduct and work within a scope. These are the different hacker classes, white hat, gray hat, black hat, terrorists and state sponsored hackers. Some terminology that you should know and will be on the test. Footprinting, the first and most convenient way that hackers use to gather information about their target. The purpose of footprinting is to learn as much as they can about a network or a computer to figure out the security implementations and how to bypass them. Enumeration is also another form of gathering data. Many enumeration tools are used to gather usernames and other related information from databases or networks. Oftentimes, they tend to use overt discovery protocols such as ICMP and SMMP to gather information, as well as scanning various ports in an attempt to further identify the host and its function. Exploit is a defined way to breach the security of a system through vulnerabilities. Hack value, the idea that something is worth doing, the sense of satisfaction of breaking something thought to be unbreakable. A vulnerability is a weakness in design or an implementation error that can lead to an unexpected or undesirable event, compromising the security of a system or a network. A zero-day attack is an exploit to a vulnerability not yet known to both the consumer and the developer until it's used. Daisy chaining. Attackers often gain control of other systems and use them for malicious activities, making it difficult to identify the attacker because of the use of other machines. Oftentimes machines are on the same network or on the outside of the network. Honeypots. A honeypot is a computer system mechanism set to detect, deflect, or to log a hacker's movements on the network. They are purposely vulnerable machines or a network of machines, giving the security team a chance to patch or fix any flaws that the hacker might have found on the honeypot. Honeypots are often exact replicas of the existing network that the hackers are trying to break into. Trojans and rootkits. A Trojan is a malicious computer program which is used to hack into a computer by misleading users of its true intent. The idea is based off the Greek story of the Trojan horse, while well, a rootkit is a set of software tools that enable an unauthorized user to gain control of a computer system without being detected. Backdoors and botnets. A backdoor is an undocumented method of gaining access to a program or a computer by using another installed program or a rootkit that bypasses normal authentication. The backdoor is generally written by a programmer who, is, who created the original program and is often only known to that person. But nowadays, a backdoor in code is a major flaw, and hackers around the world are consistently checking to see if programs or databases have backdoors. A botnet is a network of private computers infected with malicious software and controlled as a group without the owner's knowledge and often used to, to daisy chain or for DDoS attacks. Viruses and worms. A computer virus is a type of malicious software program or malware that, when executed, replicates by reproducing itself or infecting other computer programs by modifying them. Now let's not get this confused with worms. A computer worm is a standalone malware program that replicates itself in order to spread to other computers. It uses a computer network to spread itself, relying on the security failures on the target computer to access it. Unlike a computer virus, it does not need to attach itself to an existing program. Sniffing, spoofing, and hijacking. Packet sniffing is an act of capturing packets of data flowing across a computer network. It's like wiretapping, but for the internet. Spoofing is a technique where the hacker gains unauthorized access to a computer or a network pretending to be a trusted user or host. Oftentimes we see this in wireless attacks like the evil twin. Hijacking is a type of network security attack in which the attacker takes control of communications, just as an airplane hijacker takes control of a plane between two entities and masquerades as one of them. Hijacking attacks are more common against browsers. Tools like Beef allow you to hijack browsers through a process called hooking. Social engineering. A psychological manipulation of getting people to perform actions or by, or by divulging confidential information. DDoS. DDoS is short for Distributed Denial of Service. 
A DDoS is a type of DOS attack where multiple compromised systems are used to target a single system, causing a denial of service, or a DOS attack. Basically, it's an attempt to make a machine or a network resource unavailable to its, un to its intended users by temporarily interrupting the service with a flood of useless traffic. Buffer overflows. A buffer overflow condition exists when a program attempts to put more data in a buffer than it can hold, which causes it to overwrite adjacent memory locations. Think of a dam being filled with more water than it can handle, and because of that it overflows into the nearby area and covers everything in its path with water. IDS and IPS an intrusion detection system, or IDS, is a device or software application that monitors a network for malicious activity, or policy violations. Any detected activity or violation is typically reported, meaning the IDS doesn't try to stop the problem, just reports the problem. On the other hand, an intrusion prevention system, or an IPS, is a device or software application that not only monitors a network, but also has rules in place to deter or even prevent the attack altogether. Scope, which is a range of IPs or machines that you're allowed to access, tamper, or break into while conducting a penetration test. There are two triple letter acronyms you need to know for the CEH. They basically stand for the same thing. CIA and IAA. What are they? The CIA and IAA are what we call elements of information security. Information security is defined as a state of well-being of information and infrastructure in which the possibility of theft, tampering, and disruption of information and services is kept low or tolerable. Confidentiality, which is the idea of privacy, integrity, which basically means being consistent and trustworthy, and availability, which is being there when it's needed. The only difference between CIA and IAA is authenticity, which is the quality of being genuine and uncorrupted. Legal considerations. Now, there are differences between hacking and ethical hacking. Most people don't understand the difference between hacking and ethical hacking. These two terms base their differences on the intentions of the people who are performing the hacking activity, as well as the written consent and authorization of a company or the owner of the network or the computer being hacked. Now, ethical hacking refers to authorized exploitations and use of tools to penetrate a network or a computer, while hacking just refers to the unauthorized exploitation of a computer system or a network. Hacking doesn't require any consent of the owner of, of, the, owner of the computer or the network, making it illegal, while ethical hacking requires written consent, a contract which lays out the scope, an idea of damage control, and indemnification. Other legal considerations to worry about are licensing and certification. Outside of the CEH and other certificates that prove you have the proficiency to pull off a penetration test, some states require pen testers to also be licensed private investigator. So make sure to check your state laws before conducting any penetration tests on clients. Venue and jurisdiction. Another key issue for penetration tests is where the test is being conducted. Depending on that, you need to do research and make sure your contract and possibly your licensing and certifications are up to par for that state's laws. Normally on a contract, you can assign the jurisdiction to an agreed-upon state if your client is in a different state than your business. Privacy issues. A successful pen test can result in a pen tester getting into a computer or a network that they should not have had the ability to access. Also, it may include accessing data or databases which contain sensitive personal information, credit card information, personally identifiable information, or private health information. Data ownership. At the end of the test, one thing needs to be resolved. Who owns the data? It seems obvious that the pen tester owns the methodology and the report template, that the and the customer owns the findings and recommendations. But what happens if the pen tester develops new methodologies for conducting pen tests or solving configuration problems on the customer's dime? And who owns them? That's something that should be talked about, written in a contract, and probably shown to a lawyer. And last but not least, the duty to warn. Saying that a customer owns the report of a pen test creates another problem. Networks rarely stand alone. They are interconnected. What should a pen tester do if they discover major unpatched vulnerabilities that will impact customers, third parties, or the population as a whole? Is there a duty only to the customer and to keep, and to keep quiet about the situation? 
What if they discover a zero-day vulnerability that may have system-wide or industry-wide impact? What should they do then? Even if the customer owns the data, does this mean that the customer can control the use of the knowledge that the pen tester obtains? It's all a matter of what the contract says and what the courts will enforce. While we would like to think that warning about a zero day is a good thing, oftentimes you can be put in jail for doing illegal activities. Always stay in scope of contract and remember the laws of the state and the country that you're in.